Not a good week for ESPN last week. Not a good week at all. Now, the boys in L.A., they touched upon both of the incidents with Sergio Dip and Jamel Hill last week. But this video is going to focus solely on their bosses at ESPN. ESPN completely fell Sergio Dip last week. They failed him across the board. They failed him professionally, emotionally, spiritually. Failed him every possible way they could. The guy is a few months younger than me. And he was placed on a broadcast on a topic in a league that he's never covered in his second language. That would be just like me doing an ESPN Deportes segment on cricket in Spanish and not knowing what the hell a wicket is. Who was snorting too much coke to allow that decision to occur? ESPN truly fell Sergio Dip last week. And it has Sergio Dip think that people were attacking him on Twitter and making fun of his Mexican heritage. When, of course, they were making fun of how incredibly awkward that whole segment was. Incredibly awkward. Hilariously awkward for a lot of people. And it was unfortunate that he was even placed in that position to begin with. Because he should have never been damn there at all. ESPN has a plethora of bilingual, experienced, awesome journalists. Such as Max Bredos, Sebastian Salazar, Bernardo Asuna, Jorge Sedano, Antonetta Collins... Waves of experienced broadcast journalists, and you can call or disagree if some of them you feel are extraordinary and great because of that adjective I use there, especially for Max Bredos, who certainly has been polarizing for many people throughout the years. They're not lacking in bilingual journalists. Yet, because they wanted to save costs, they wanted to be cheap, despite the millions and millions rolling in, even with subscriptions canceling because of how cable is so expensive and no moron conservatives, not because of your perceived thoughts that ESPN is a liberal haven. Despite having enough money and resources to simply have an experienced sideline reporter for the only Monday night doubleheader that they will have this year and every year when they do the opening week Monday doubleheader, ESPN thought it was just so great that they'll have a 29-year-old journalist be the sideline reporter for both ESPN Deportes and ESPN, despite him never covering an NFL game before for ESPN and doing it on Monday Night Football. The network got what it deserved last week. Sergio Dip didn't get what he deserved. He was an innocent bystander by ESPN thinking that they were going to get away with being cheap and just do something that doesn't require the full effort that is bestowed upon the perceived and clearly biggest sports news number one operation in America and the entire world. If that decision wasn't already horrible and commonsensically unsound to begin with, what they did with Jamel Hill having to apologize for her tweets on President Dump being a white supremacist in her view, bullshit. It really is. Jamel Hill has been a respected, opinionated journalist for years on ESPN. She's always had at least rational facts to back it up. Even if you disagree Entirely with her opinion, she would at least have facts to back it up. She's not doing some Alex Jones unhinged BS. Because she wouldn't have rose to prominence if she was doing that. Especially being a black female journalist. So ESPN has known that Jamel Hill has been solid throughout the years with her opinions. And that she's not going to deliver something that is unhinged. And yet... They think and get pressured 
by the whole thoughts of some of them up there who are conservatives, who just want to still keep the thing flowing, who wish that ESPN would just have their personality stick to sports. They somehow thought that the disaster in chief who has shown, been around, and engaged in actions that appear to want to continue white supremacy because you don't have to be a KKK member to be a white supremacist. You just continue white supremacy by the dishonesty that entails with the legacy of whiteness in America and throughout global society. President Dump has shown plenty of examples of that even before he became the disaster in chief. And it is a sentiment or feelings that other ESPN personalities have expressed on Twitter pages how they can't stand the man. So why was it so essential, so necessary for you to condemn what Jamel Hill said, despite that opinion having a lot of factual basis towards it? This is still the number one news organization for sports in the world. And it's going to be probably forever because of how incompetent the other sports networks in this country are. But it's hard to defend ESPN from the ways of conservative nutcases trying to go at them on a constant basis when they make these decisions like this in terms of having to criticize Jamel Hill for her opinion and then placing a 29-year-old inexperienced journalist on the sidelines because they want to be cute with diversity instead of doing diversity the right way. ESPN simply fell both Sergio Dip and Jamel Hill last week, but they also failed us, the viewers, and themselves. Hopefully they realize that, but I highly doubt they ever will.